Uh, there's visa on arrival, but uh, make sure you have cash. It's important. Make sure you have cash in uh, foreign currency. They'll take anything except Nepali uh, rupees. It's fine. They, they, want, they want your money. They want you to bring them up your money. Uh, funny story, when I was there, there were two girls on the line for the visa. They didn't have money at all. Uh, and uh, the ATM in the airport wasn't working. Okay, welcome, welcome to Nepal. Expect some things not to work. Uh, so uh, what they had to do was deposit their passports with immigration. They were allowed out to go get money somewhere. Uh, they got money in, uh, in rupees, in Nepali rupees. They came back to the airport. They found a guy to change it into dollars. Then they joined the line again, and then they were allowed uh, to get their visa and leave the airport. This is my favorite place in Kathmandu. Uh, if you need an escape from uh, the hustle and bustle of this crazy city, crazy wonderful city, Garden of Dreams, it's a small Italian garden uh, next to the tunnel. Again, direction next to real North Face store is another landmark. Uh, that's the, that's actually a North Face store that sells North Face products because you see North Face everywhere. They have uh, fakes and knockoffs, uh, knockoffs uh, and they just make them locally. And they stay, uh, they uh, put uh, their logo on North Face, and you go, oh my God, North Face for 200 rupees, rupees like a jacket I'll buy. Uh, quality is not bad, actually. I bought a few things, like they're so cheap, so I uh, wanted to buy them. If you want the real gear, there's a few real uh, gear stores there. North Face, if you keep walking uh, after that, Garden of Dreams, uh, get a book, get your music, go there, spend a few hours, relaxing hours. You still hear the cars from outside, but you uh, think you left Kathmandu, and then you go out and boom, it's in your face. <laughs> Let me talk a little bit about Kathmandu, because uh, the most striking thing is that there are not really streets, not street names. There's a few main avenues, uh, but uh, you'll be stunned to find out that uh, everything inside the tunnel, the address is tunnel. Okay, so uh, they have PO boxes, that's how it works, uh, but in terms of actual addresses, uh, it's by, uh, by uh, landmarks and sites, uh, so uh, the most important uh, uh, landmark is probably the Kathmandu guest house, uh, you stay there, it's right in the middle, but a lot of uh, places are referenced from the Kathmandu guest house, from the post office, uh, famous restaurants, like that. And this is done in a place that's called the Last Resort. They have the bungee, it's 160 meters, okay, one of the highest in the world. Uh, and uh, they also do the canyoning. Uh, you can do this uh, as a day trip, I did this as one day uh, trip. Uh, you go early in the morning, you do the bungee, you do this, you come back at night. Uh, if you do the bungee, be prepared to wait for hours because there will probably be uh, another 100 people doing it the same day. Uh, but uh, it, the, uh, the facilities of this place are really nice and relaxing. They have uh, lawns, they have places there for you to eat. So again, bring uh, your music and your books, relax, they'll, they'll call you. You don't uh, wait on the bridge in line for hours, <laughs> okay, don't get me wrong. Uh, they have small groups, 10 people go on the bridge, and then they set you up, and then uh, uh, you jump. But I did a bunch in Nepal, in uh, New Zealand as well, and I got to tell you, these guys, I was very impressed with, uh, with them. They're very professional, they gave me a uh, good feeling. It was my second time, so maybe I was less nervous, uh, but still, uh, uh, I felt very secure jumping this time. Poker, which is a beautiful setting along a uh, lake. Uh, and uh, to get uh, there, there's, a, there's an option of going with a local bus. Uh, if you like uh, very crowded, uncomfortable buses and you want to save some money, uh, go for that. Uh, you may end up uh, riding on the roof. Some people do that. I had to do it uh, <laughs> coming back from the trail. It's actually fun, but uh, I did for two hours going to program. It takes six or seven hours being on the roof. Uh, so. Uh, you know, the, the tourist bus have uh, designated their uh, sittings, you know, so you don't have to be crowded into a bus. Paragliding, okay, more adrenaline. You see, I like here to do some uh, adrenaline activities. Uh, one of the best spots in the world. 
to do it. Uh, first of all, again, it's cheap. This was, again, $90. I think anywhere else in the world, it's probably going to be about $200. Uh, and it, in terms of uh, the conditions, uh, again, it's not coming from me. They say it's one of the best spots in the world. And where else can you do it that you see the Himalayas as a back background? You know? Uh, half an hour up in the air. I did skydiving. I did other stuff. This is like flying. You carry all your money with you when you go trekking. There is no, there are no ATMs. There are no banks. You know, uh, so you carry all the money with you. Uh, when you go to get that money, just remember that uh, you can withdraw just certain amount of money uh, at one time. Also remember that in Nepal, they cut the powers every day for 16 hours. Every day, the government cut it out. They do rotation. Uh, they don't have enough electricity to go around so their zones. They pass it between, uh, between different zones. Uh, ATMs have generators. Actually, every place there's there are generators. And here's an important tip. When you select your hotel, ask them where the generator is. Okay? I did that mistake. Uh, I got a great deal in Pokhara. A room facing the lake. I got so excited. They gave me a great deal. I said, wow, so cheap, you know? They didn't tell me that the generator was under the, my room. <laughs> I did not sleep that night. Not because of the noise, because of the vibration. The whole room was moving. And uh, when you work with porters, um, they carry your main backpack and you just carry your day pack. You know, uh, I helped him a little bit. I carry his own small bag. It's amazing how the porters will bring a day pack and that's all they need. And we bring this giant backpack with 50 kilos of uh, clothes and sleeping bag. They bring nothing. It's amazing. Uh, so I carry this bag. Uh, and uh, I just want to talk a tiny bit about Porter's economy uh, because I think it's important if you hire a Porter by yourself and you work with the agency. Uh, I paid, uh, it cost about uh, $10 a day, 850 rupees. Uh, rupees 80 to 1 dollar ratio. Uh, the agency takes about 200 rupees, so that leaves them with about 650 rupees a day. Okay, he has to use about 300 rupees out of that uh, to sleep and feed himself. Okay, so he takes on about 300 rupees, you know, which is not a lot. You know, so uh, just consider that uh, because uh, uh, you know if you start haggling down, you know, and uh, you know if you hire a porter by yourself, just consider that. You know, there, there's a market price, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, these people work hard, they carry a bag for two weeks, you know, and they uh, just tip them. Give them a nice big tip at the end, I get this guy uh, money, I give him some of my equipment. Uh, he was a wonderful guy, but uh, yeah, they don't make a lot. Now, in terms of uh, popularity, actually, Annapurna is the most popular. Everyone talks about Everest, everyone wants to see the Everest, but uh, the majority of people that go to Nepal do Annapurna. Uh, Everest is the second most popular, Lantang is the third. Uh, the reason for the popularity is uh, accessibility. Annapurna is very easy to arrive, to get to. Uh, bus uh, from uh, Kathmandu, five, six hours from either Kathmandu or Pokhara, you're there. Uh, you can start and uh, end in Pokhara, uh, so in Kathmandu, if you don't want to go all the way to Pokhara just to trip. Uh, the Annapurna is much closer to Pokhara, uh, but because of the roads, the, the distances to get to the trail is similar. I feel it's, it's better to base yourself in uh, Pokhara, start and end there, just to have a two hours bus drive instead of five, six hours bus drive back to Kathmandu. Uh, but if you're short on time, you want to do the Annapurna, you can start and end in Kathmandu as well. Uh, so, easy bus ride. I'm going to talk about Everest later. Uh, Lantang, uh, I heard my thing about it. I didn't do it myself. Uh, the main reason I wasn't into it is because it takes, even though it's the closest to Kathmandu, right here, it's only about 100 kilometers. But the bus right there is supposed to be about, about 10 hours, 10, 11 hours. Uh, October to November, the most popular trekking season. Uh, the reason being, uh, the weather, it's just, uh, it doesn't rain, it doesn't snow, and visibility is just perfect. Uh, and uh, then the dust starts building up again, okay? Uh, and I heard a lot of uh, uh, 
a lot of, I read a lot of forums to see where to point to go, and I heard there start to be dust and uh, uh, during March as well. And I was really worried about it. I said, I'm going all the way, uh, halfway across the world. I'm going to spend money. I'm going to spend time getting there. Am I going to see the Himalayas if I go in March? And I ended up going in March. And uh, there was haze in there a little bit. But it's OK. Don't worry about it. It's OK, it's okay to go in March. Uh, when you go, when you get to Kathmandu, you say, oh my god, it's so haze here. You know, what did I do? Uh, but uh, when you get over two kilometers, it clears up. It's not a problem, you see the mountains. Again, the first few days on the Annapurna Trail, I said, oh my god, I should have gone in October. But I read, it clears up. Once you hit a certain one, that's it. The haze is not there. If you want a perfect visibility, October to November, but it does get crowded. Okay? It gets crowded on the trail. And I said, my god, I'm going to uh, hike in, uh, on a trail that uh, takes 20 days. How can it get crowded? You know, how many people it takes to get there? But, but you'll feel it. You will feel that there's more people. And I was there in March. And you walk and you see a lot of people walking alongside you, especially on the Everest Trail. And uh, it makes a difference. So if you like to feel your nature uh, you know, by yourself, with less people around you, and I think you can connect to nature better that way, uh, you might want to consider going in March uh, through May. Uh, if you want uh, your pictures to be perfect, you know, if you're worried about that, maybe go in October, November. Probably going to be a bit more expensive October, November. Probably going to be harder for you to book flights out if you are doing it on the go, on the flow. You might have to go uh, live to India overland. That's another option if you get uh, stuck and get flights. Um, permits, doing it by yourself again. Uh, you can just arrive in the, um, on the trail. They have, uh, they have uh, posts everywhere where they check your permits. You need to arrange two things in advance. Uh, teams and entrance fees. Teams is a uh, uh, track your information management system, they just register you. Suppose for your safety, suppose another way to collect a few dollars uh, from you. Uh, cost twenty dollars. I did my teams for Anapuna in Pokhara. I uh, was able to go to the office myself. It's it's uh, it's not as hard to get there. Uh, and I also paid for the entrance fee for the park. Uh, in uh, in Everest, uh, you have to arrange the things in advance, and uh, you can pay the fee actually on the trail. If you don't pay the fee on the trail in Annapurna, it will be just twice. You, you'll pay a fine, which is uh, which will double the cost. I think the entrance fee is another ten dollars, so it's not so bad. Uh, in Kathmandu, let a travel agent arrange this for you. I, again, I tried to do it by myself. I left the Tamil, tried to walk there, and if I thought the Tamil was chaotic. Wow, once you hit uh, the real uh, Kathmandu, once you go out, I got lost a little bit. It was a great experience. Uh, but uh, I said, okay, I'll give them the $2. They can do this for me. You know, I had my, uh, my permits ready in a few hours. It was great. 